Hello everybody and welcome to Football Manager 2020. The beta has finally been released. It feels like we've been waiting an absolute lifetime but it's here and my first save for Football Manager 20 is going to be a Sir Alex Ferguson challenge. If you're unfamiliar with how a Sir Alex Ferguson challenge works on Football Manager, this is how you do it. You holiday it to November 6th and you take over whoever is 19th in the Premier League. This is of course what Sir Alex Ferguson did with Manchester United all them years ago and basically you try to replicate his career with Manchester United sticking with just the one team and then trying to become Premier League heavyweights and then European heavyweights winning some domestic competitions along the way trying to promote youth players where possible and you can get a little bit more strict with the rules and stuff but I play pretty loose to be honest with you I take over the team in 19th and do as well as I can with them basically so I have holidayed until November 6th I'm not sure who my team is going to be just yet. In terms of the teams I want, I mean, there's a lot of teams. I would take the likes of West Ham, like I did last year. Um, some fantastic sides available. But there's some newly promoted sides maybe I would like to avoid, but I know that's going to be difficult, taking over the team second from bottom of the Prem. But let's just take a look, see who we get. So here we are at the new Football Manager home screen. As you can see, we are on November 6th in 2019. And we have to find out who we are going to take over in the Premier League. The main one I want to avoid is probably Sheffield United. <laughs> Sheffield United is the team we are going to be taking over. Could have been Southampton, which I would have liked. Norwich I probably would have wanted to avoid as well. Aston Villa probably wouldn't have been terrible. I think Sheffield United, I haven't checked through all the squads in Football Manager. I'm not too sure about the attributes and who's the best players and stuff like that. But Sheffield United, I would imagine is probably one of the weaker sides. So we take a look at how they are doing in the Premier League, obviously on seven points, 19th position in the Prem. They've only won one game, which was a 2-1 home win against Newcastle. Well done, boys. Four draws, Burnley, Villa, Bournemouth, and Man United away from home. That's a good result. But six defeats, 11 games in. Um, obviously, there's only a couple of months to go before the January transfer window, which is something we'll be eagerly anticipating. Finance wise, I'm not sure how good Sheffield United are, whether they would have any at all. I have no idea. Well, the transfer history has completely changed. I've no idea what I'm doing. But it looks like it includes all the previous uh, signings that have been done um, during the real life window. So hopefully, if the AI hasn't made any other major signings, there might be some transfer funds for us waiting on. But anyway, let's create a new manager. Let's take over Sheffield United. And go through all the new stuff because I haven't played the game yet. I have no idea what stuff like club vision and youth development is going to be like. So once you take over a club on Football Manager 20, this is the first screen that you'll be welcomed with. It's basically the news item that you would get usually in your email to say that you have took over as Sheffield United manager in my case. Uh, meeting with the chairman. So this basically looks like how you would have your usual meeting in Football Manager 19 with some extra bits added in and on a bit of a nicer screen so club culture five-year plan this is all completely new in terms of club culture make the most of set pieces preferred but develop players using the club's youth system is desired which i guess i'll be um more harshly criticized on if i don't do that purely down to being desired rather than preferred required in terms of the five-year plan is work within the wage budget which shouldn't be a problem really End of current season, fight bravely against relegation. So if we do get relegated, that says to me that I might not get sacked depending on how we actually perform in the league. We need to reach the fourth round of the FA Cup. I believe, where do we enter? Either the second or third round. So that shouldn't be too bad. Um, and the League Cup is not a requirement. It's a preferred. So that's quite good for me. In terms of the following season, actually that's the, that's the third season. In the second season, there's nothing really highlighted. Because we don't know what league we'll be in. Um, remain in Premier Division for the third season. Fourth season the same. Fifth season the same. So it's pretty simple with Sheffield United. Stay in the Premier League. And now we're back to the usual screen. So I'm going to take a quick look at my squad in terms of tactic and stuff. i seen on the previous screen that they were playing attack and wing backs in a three back formation. Which is something I probably will adopt myself if they've got the personnel for it. But uh, let me get go through some of this stuff and I'll see you in a bit. So I've had a quick jig about with the tactic and formation that I think we'll end up settling on. It will be a three back and it will be attack and wing backs to hopefully exploit the space on the wings. The players are not very good, quite honestly. I don't know if they're good enough to stay up in the Premier League. So the tactic will be 
vital in helping us stay there. In terms of some basics, I went with the GG Press in terms of uh, just my base tactic. I've already changed it pretty heavily. Um, and it will be getting changed as the game sort of roll on. I'm not really sure if it's something I want to stick with. Uh, I am going to go attacking straight off the bat. I just feel like in previous football managers, sitting back and maybe even trying to counter and stuff is not really the best way for a side that will lower down the division to be able to end up getting results. So it's something we're obviously going to have to be tinkering running with throughout. I would like to get it settled before the January period so I know exactly what I need to buy. I know exactly how we need to go and in terms of transfers we've got 20 million sitting there obviously we're down on the wage budget straight away so in terms of my club vision on maintaining the wage budget we'll adjust that down to 15 million with 50k remaining in the budget i will be looking to sell players on particularly on higher wages who are not making the first team and we'll be looking to improve the club in general so in terms of the club vision screen you can see all the things that we will be judged on ongoing throughout the season and in terms of the club culture as a whole we will be looking to develop players using the youth club system but that's part of the sir alex ferguson challenge anyway so i'm not too bothered about that um and obviously the current season's objectives we will be looking at as things go financially sheffield united are not in a terrible place currently sitting in 30 million pound in the balance and it is going up so we are earning money whilst in the premier league purely down to the wage budget is absolutely tiny for a premier league club only spending four hundred and sixty thousand pounds per week the development center there's absolutely nothing in here obviously this is something i'm going to have to get used to over the course of a season um i haven't seen this before i didn't really take much notice in terms of the promotional stuff football manager did so it will it is pretty new to me and we will have to keep an eye on that over the course of the season so in terms of the schedule for today's episode we will be playing spurs in our first game it isn't for another 16 days or so so plenty of time to help me get settled in to the new football manager and i'll see i'll see you at the match i guess so we'll start with the encounter of our first new feature in football manager 20 it is the code of conduct for the club in anticipation of the rest of the season, club captain Billy Sharp has been as with the ba 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 ba. Missed training, first time, half a week. I'm okay with that. Gone here well per day, one week, two weeks, that's fine. I think I'm pretty much fine with what Billy Sharp has um, asked of me there. I'm not sure if maybe if I'd changed them radically, whether Billy Sharp and me might have got in there a bit of a confrontation or he might have been a bit unhappy at how I've handled that. But I'm not bothered, to be honest. So we are here at the first game of our campaign with Sheffield United and I thought we'd have a quick run through my first 11 at least initially to see how it might line up. So Dean Henderson will start in goal obviously on loan from Manchester United. Uh, he looks like a decent keeper, probably not great. If it was something I could improve easily and cheaply I probably would. Three star current, four and a half star potential. It's not a major, major gripe if he is going to be our first choice keeper for the rest of the season. Now we're playing three centre-backs. Chris Basham will be our first one. He's absolutely direly slow. That is the main issue with the sort of system we want to play. It's, it requires fast centre-backs. So he might get himself caught, at least in this initial period, whilst we are getting the tactic in for the players. Um, but mentally and technically, he's a decent centre-half. But he is someone I would like to improve. John Egan is the next one. He's definitely a lot better in the physical category. Technically, he's fantastic. He's not as good as Chris Basham mentally, but he's still pretty good there as well. Three star current, three and a half star potential, 27 years old. And he is a Sunderland Academy prospect. Uh, prospect. Uh, he came from the Sunderland Academy. So I'm quite happy to have him in my first team squad purely just for that. Our best central defender is Jack O'Connell, 25 year old Englishman, four star, four star. Fantastic across the board he's a really well-rounded center half he's just exactly the kind of player you need when you're down in the bottom of the premier league he's not going to make many mistakes physically he's well-rounded mentally and technically well-rounded as well he is the kind of player who won't be replaced in terms of our wing backs we've got some good options ball uh baldock baldock george baldock is our right wing back he looks decent physically he's absolutely fantastic technically he's got the crossing he's got the dribbling He's got the first touch, he's got the passing. Uh, we are looking more towards the attacking attributes for these sort of players. They will be playing in wing-back attacking roles. So defensively, as long as they can do the bare minimum in terms of tackling and marking, I'm pretty much okay with anything 
So he looks decent on the right hand side. And we've got Stephen starting on the left hand side. He might end up losing his first team spot to Ziegler, who we'll take a look at next. Mentally, he's not great, um, but physically, he's okay. Technically, he's decent. He's probably the weaker of the wing backs in terms of the starting, but we do have Ziegler, who is on loan from Watford, who I think I'm going to start. He's just better physically. Um, and that's what we need. We need players who's going to be bombing up and down the pitch, being able to use the pace to get past players and have the stamina to match, uh, to last the 90 minutes. In terms of our central midfielders, we're starting with Oliver Norwood and John Fleck. Norwood is one of the best players in the squad. He's already paved off because I've turned down a contract, uh, renegotiating with him. So it might be something I have to revisit further down the line. But physically, he's okay. Just about, you know, he's on that precipice where I start to say, is he good enough? Strength and jump and reach, it's not, not, not crazily important, but it's something I would like to improve upon. But mentally, he's well-rounded. Technically, he's decent. He's going to be playing that deep line, playmaker role for us, sitting in just behind John Fleck and hopefully covering for the likes of Baldock and Ziegler when they go forward. Uh, John Fleck is going to be partnering him. He looks decent as well. Another well-rounded player. Nothing fantastic out of any of these players. They're not no stats that will make you jump out of your seat and think you should start him because he's fantastic but he's decently well-rounded and he's one of the highest earners at the club on 35k per week which is absolutely nothing in terms of a Premier League team so at 28 years old worth 14 million I'm happy with him in the squad McBurney one of the signings that Sheffield United made in the summer transfer window technically decent mentally fantastic physically a little bit poor um, to be playing that attacker midfield role. I do like fast players and he is not fast whatsoever. Um, but hopefully he can be a good decent attacker midfielder for us. Which is where we're going to start. He might not end up playing that role for us long term. We might not end up playing an attacker midfielder at all. We might end up pushing him back into the central uh, area. Or even go three up top. You never know what might work on Football Manager 2020. Uh, in terms of our first game as well. We're going to start with McGoldrick up top. Bog standard championship striker. No other words about it. And exactly the same with Billy Sharp. I'm actually tempted to maybe lose McGoldrick and start Billy Sharp. Uh, it's either McGoldrick and Bill or Billy Sharp start with Lise Mousset. The reason why I want to start Lise Mousset is not because he's decent. <laughs> right? He's fast. And it's something that was sorely lacking in pretty much our entire side, barring the right wing back. We have no pace anywhere, so... Having him up top as the advance forward, sitting on the the last man and hopefully making some difference for us might come in handy. In terms of the rest of the squad, we've got some players. The likes of Ravel Morrison, who might get some game time here or there, but he's not a fantastic player. Um, and as you can see, the likes of Phil Jagielka, I don't really want to be playing him if I can avoid it. Ben Osborne's a decent little attack midfielder slash central midfielder. He will probably get some game time purely down to the lack of options that we've got in the centre. This squad is not good enough for the Premier League. It's as simple as that, really. It's not good enough. So we are going to have to make some major moves in the January transfer window if we are going to stay up. But we've got our first game against Tottenham, who are sitting in third. We're here. Here's our first game. We are at home against Tottenham Hotspur. They come at us with a 4-4-2 four, 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 diamond formation. Deli Ali in behind Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son. Lo Celso, Eriksen, Ndombele, Danny Rose, Davinson Sanchez, Alderweireld, Walker Peters and Hugo Lloris. We might struggle quite heavily against that sort of side. I'll get me face packs and stuff installed in time and it'll look at 10 times better than this. I am in a little bit of trouble editing the settings on FM20. Hopefully this looks okay. The match speed is a little bit slow. I'll try and get that increased but it's not. Oh, now it's letting me. So we'll get it slightly faster and hopefully that looks okay as things go. Early highlight here, Ziegler on the... This looks awful actually. The FPS is awful but we take the lead through George Baldock on the third minute. And I'm a little bit shocked. I'm a little bit taken away because I'm not really sure what's going on. Martin Ziegler gets the ball to Lise Mousset who gets it back to Ziegler. Who gets the ball in and our wing backs combine to put us 1-0 up inside 5 minutes. I've turned down the graphic settings just a little bit. So hopefully my computer will be able to get this at a good FPS. And it does just as Davinson Sanchez equalises straight away for Tottenham Hotspur. 
Christian Eriksen with the free kick in. And Spurs are not going to give us an easy ride here. He plays it in. Nice header by Davinson Sanchez. The keeper should probably do a little bit better. He was a little bit in the wiser show me like or oh, shown as the VAR decision. I'm not really bothered. Just you know, the goal counts. It's one one. Um but yeah, not not a great thing for us. But we hit the bar and Ziegler goes for goal. Loris manages to get his fingertips to it and keep us out from going two one up. Things are looking okay. First ten minutes in, we are actually giving Spurs quite a good game. Obviously, the equaliser is a little bit disappointing, but um, as things stand, we're keeping a, a more possession than they are. We've had a good couple of shots as well. Uh, 20 minutes in, I'm relatively pleased with what I'm seeing so far, but Ericsson plays in the corner, comes to Son on the edge. We'll manage to get rid of it, and McGoldrick can pick it up on this right-hand side. <sighs> Stupid, poor, really poor pass. Finds Endombele and Hyungman Song's in behind, and Henderson manages to keep us in this game 1-1 one, one. another highlight now 25 minutes in and it's not us on the attack it's spurs on the attack danny rose cuts out a crossed field pass from us and uh davinson sanchez clears the ball down the line for human son on this left hand side he gets to the byline plays it back to danny rose on the edge to ericsson and on Bellia. they've got the men piled up and it looks like they're playing um quite slow paced football and harry kane's in the box hits the bar Falls to Son. We'll manage to get it clear through Chris uh, Basham. Whew, I'm a little bit more nervy now. It looks like Spurs are definitely coming in this game a little bit more. We're going to go back onto a balanced team mentality at this point. And then oh, Deli Ali nearly put Spurs ahead again. 38 minutes in now. The team is not performing too badly. But Spurs have definitely come into this game more and more. But McBurney manages to nip in ahead of Endon Bellia. And... That was a highlight. McBurney, what the hell was that, mate? Another highlight now, just before half time, only 30 seconds to go. Please don't concede now or set at least move set away. He's in behind. He goes for goal. Loris with the save. Almost putting us 2 1 up in front before half time. And there we are. There's the match stats at half time. We are getting dominated just a little bit after that first 20 minute spell. Um, but at 1 1, I'm relatively pleased with what I'm saying. So we've kicked off the second half. We're not making any substitutes at this point. Everyone seems pretty content in terms of their conditioning. Um, and the first 20 minutes or so it has run away with it. Ziegler is the one who is struggling the most. We do have Stevens who can come on in his place. And we're going to make that substitution right now. If we can get a draw from our first game against Tottenham Hotspur. I will be absolutely delighted with that. And here we are with only 14 minutes remaining on the clock. It is another highlight and it's Spurs who are currently in possession. Eric Dyer and Eriksson. So nice little play with Danny Rose on that left hand side. Who was that? Who was what's his name? It's O'Connell. I will rely <laughs> I said he was going to be Mr. Reliable. That that was poor. That was really, really poor. The ball's whipped in here and O'Connell just it was a lovely little touch for Harry Kane, really. When you look at it, it was a nice little dink off. But unfortunately, that doesn't go in our favour. We are going to look to make some more substitutions at this point. John Flex struggling a little bit. We'll get more Besic in, in his spot on loan from Everton. Or have he signed permanently? I have no idea. Um, and we'll go attacking as well for the final, final 10 minutes. And Harry Kane gets his second goal of the game. Put Spurs 3-1 up. I mean, this has all come from our own possession. Stevens, McBurney. Back to Stevens. What happens here? I didn't even take... I mean, what the fuck is that? Seriously. I mean... <laughs> that, that's a fucking highlight and a half, isn't it? Uh, like, seriously. That... that I don't... That must be a code and error. That is not a thing that happens. Oh, God. I want to take another look at that because that is unbelievable stevens that's a great cross stevens an absolutely fantastic cross i think we've just been done now well there we are our first game in charge marred by two defensive errors to put tottenham 3-1 up and they have taken the victory that last goal is going to haunt me for the rest of my days well, trying to brush that off 
to one side we're going to look forward to the next episode we are going to come back for the Wolves and Southampton game a few about 10 days before the January transfer period starts and obviously the episode after that will be that period where we will be able to make some major major changes hopefully but anyway boys if you are excited for the first save of FM20 please consider dropping a like getting yourself subscribed and until next time take it easy